So, in the, uh, this lecture, we are going to derive two expressions. One, what is the effect of temperature on the solubility? You know that solubility of two phases into one into another, it depends on the chemical potential equality of a particular component. But one needs to derive a mathematical expression to find out whether we can actually calculate the solubility as a function of temperature. So, how to do that? To do that, let us assume a simple phase diagram, okay, which is, is has a terminal solute solution on the one side and other side there is very little solute solution. Okay, and on this side we assume there is a very little solute solubility. So, and you know these two curves, one here, one there, they indicate how the solute solubility of A in B or B in A changes as a function of temperature. The question is this, can I have a mathematical expression using thermodynamics of solute solubility as a function of temperature? So, let us consider an alloy composition, this which is solidified and then its solute solubility limits will slowly change. As you see, beta is is basically having very low solid solubility of A in B, but alpha is large, okay. So, because of that, because of this, they are going to be, you have to see how this phi and the composition diagrams will look like. So, I am going to draw the phi and the composition diagram there. And because beta has a very low solute solubility, so beta here the composition diagram will looks like this. Okay, it is better to use a color chalk. That's what we have been doing. And the common tangent between them, just we draw a little bit this side, otherwise the phase diagram data will not match, is it not? Because this is where the phase diagram. Okay. Now I draw a common tangent. So that's what is your equilibrium composition. Now, as you see here, two things you must see carefully. Let me explain. One is that this line tells you equality of equilibrium between the chemical potential. Because this is A and this is B end, so here also it will be A. We can extend this line till further, wherever it meets there. So that means it tells you that we have a small uh, solute solubility in beta, a large solute solubility in alpha of <coughs> B components, and we are going to do that. So as you know, mu is given by 
this expression okay g let me see whether i have written it properly or not sometime i also do mistakes did i write it properly okay. something is missing here that's the gamma we have seen that right so if i write down this is this will be in the alpha phase fine so that's basically the chemical potential of b in alpha that's equal to the free energy g plus 1 minus xp whole square into gamma gamma sorry sigma sigma is your sorry gamma not sigma gamma is your interaction parameters and plus rtl and xp i have already given you this expression now we can write down this expression like this minus 1 minus xp whole square this is equal to mu b and this may be gb that is actually gb alpha okay gb alpha means the alpha g the value of phi and g of alpha phase when at the b end okay so that's nothing but this difference mu b alpha you can see here gb alpha is somewhere there meeting there okay so that's the difference between these two that's so what is called delta g so i can write down again that is the difference of phi and g of the alpha phase when it is in equilibrium with the equilibrium with beta minus when it is not in equilibrium with beta okay whenever it is present so if i extend this phi curve this is what is going to meet here and that tells you the phi energy of the alpha when b, uh, your pure b is at the pure b end delta g okay that's the difference of delta g so we can write down then very nicely the expression so that's actually so therefore at x b equal to x b e that is at this composition this can be written 1 minus x b e all square minus r t ln x b e okay so then what i can do i can write down x b oh sorry i have been missing this term always x p e is nothing but exponential minus delta g b delta g plus this divided by r t it goes there hmm x x p equal to x p so that's actually solution solubility limit of uh, that's the solution solubility of x p as a function of temperature so you must have a knowledge of the interaction parameter gamma and the phi energy change between g alpha and this equilibrium between alpha and beta then only you can calculate that and this can be further modified much simpler because once you know the delta g is depends on delta uh, h minus t delta s you can little bit modify it but that doesn't matter this is what is the expression for the solute solubility as a function of temperature for alpha phase so we, only one parameter you need to know because the interaction parameter is always known for the two components a and b what you need to know is the delta g so that can be only obtained if i know the phi and g functionals basically it, it's the phi and g what is delta g delta g is nothing but phi and g of alpha phase at the pure b end so that can be easily obtained if i know the phi and g expression of the alpha phase minus the chemical potential of b in alpha so that chemical potential can be obtained when you draw a common tangent 
but this one this one can be obtained when you know the g alpha g alpha will be a function of x b okay obviously g alpha is a function of x b temperature and pressure so we assume pressure to be constant then g alpha is a function of x b and the temperature so then this has obviously <coughs> to be obtained first once you know these functions then only we can calculate that pure b and what is the g alpha that means by putting x p equal to 1 x p equal to 1 you will get g b alpha and in that case g b alpha as x p equal to 1 will be only a function of temperature because we have assumed that x p is a constant here. So that is what I am saying. So once you know this, this parameter by the way you have derived and you know the interaction parameter gamma then actually we can easily calculate what is the effect of temperature on the solubility of B in A, B in alpha phase. So that is the first thing you should know. This is important in many of the calculation using, using your nucleation kinetics. So now let us, uh, whatever time I have in this lecture, let us first derive, let us derive another important expression. You know interfaces will have a strong effect on the phase transformations. Interfaces means between two phases, suppose you have a one solid, one liquid phase or one solid and another solid, interfaces will develop and these interfaces will have a strong effect on the phase transformation. So how do I do that? So that means what we are going to do is, as is written in this book, the influence of interface on the equilibrium. So let us suppose, so therefore influence, remember we will discuss interfaces in detail manner, that is why that is what we are starting up now interfaces basic idea is that whatever derivations I have done so far for the free energy we will assume that interfaces has no effect basically on the equilibrium why because we assume the interfaces to be very small in number or small actually in, uh, to affect the equilibrium but that is not the case why because let us assume I have alpha phase and any small amount of beta phases are formed. These are all beta phases, correct? So what is the effect of interface between alpha and beta, this interface on the equilibrium? If we assume that the beta is very large, very large in the sense is that the surface area, uh, interface area between beta and alpha is very large, then there is a strong effect on the equilibrium. So that must be brought in. How we can do that? It is very simple case like a, you know, soap bubble in a soap solution. We know that if I have a soap bubble in a solution, the pressure increase, pressure inside the soap bubble is nothing but this, this is gamma. Okay, and this is the radius of the bubble. So, similar analysis we can apply here. How we can do that? We can always assume that both alpha and beta phases are subjected to atmospheric pressure P. But you know, because beta is a small and within alpha, just like a soap bubble in a bucket of soap or mixture, water mixture. So therefore, there is a extra pressure within the beta phase just like a soap bubble. In a soap bubble, we always assume extra pressure. So because of this, because the beta phase is well inside the alpha and very small in size, there is an extra pressure on the uh, beta phase because, uh, uh, because of that aspect. And that is exactly the same as what happens in a soap bubble. And this extra pressure is nothing but 2 into gamma divided by r. So we can write down this extra pressure here in this case is 2 gamma alpha beta divided by radius of the 
beta f. If this is twice, twice r, then we can write an r is the radius of the beta phase particle, average radius. So, what we need to know is the interpersonal energy between alpha and beta, that is the effect. Now, how does it affect the phi energy? As you know, phi energy has a pressure temperature term, right, pressure volume term, and the way it affects is like this change of phi energy will be equal to change of pressure multiplied by volume, okay, multiplied by the basically molar volume. <coughs> that is obvious, G is nothing but E plus PV minus TS. So, pressure effect of pressure because of change of pressure, if everything else is constant, temperature and other things are constant, the change of phi energy because of pressure change will be equal to this, okay, because we assume volume is not changing much. So, therefore, we can write down delta G is nothing but twice gamma alpha beta multiplied by Vm divided by R. So, that is the change of phi energy because of the interface, because you have a finite interface between alpha and beta, this is what is the effect which will happen. This equation you have seen many, many times, but probably you have never thought how it is to be derived. This derivation of delta P equal to twice gamma by R is available even in 12 standard books. So, there is no point in doing it the pressure difference can be easily calculated. From this equation we can easily get down into G equal to twice gamma alpha beta multiplied molar volume of the beta phase divided by the radii, radius of the beta phase. So, smaller is the R value, higher is the delta G change, smaller say high, larger is the alpha beta interface energy, higher is the delta G. So, that means what? This change in phi energy because of the pressure, because of this interface basically is directly proportional to the interface energy, inversely proportional to the radius of the particle. That is why smaller the particle, that is why the precipitates actually we will see the precipitation case they are nano size. So, therefore, effect of the interface energy on the phi energy will be more. So, now we understand whatever calculation of phi energy and derivations we have done so far has to be corrected with this effect which we have not done so far because I was only talking about the cases where interface was very you know the negligible effect. In fact, in bulk phenomenon we see always ignore the effect of interfaces, interfaces, dislocation, defects all we ignore because that helps us making the things understandable, easily handleable. Now that you know how to add it, so for every G expression, every G expression means every G phi energy expression which you have derived in order to take in the consideration effect of the interfaces, we have to add this term. What will happen if we add this term? Graphically, let us see what will happen. What will happen is basically the in compositions which are equilibrium composition of the interface will change. So, let me draw it here. I just draw a phi energy composition diagram for two phases alpha and beta. In one case, the R is infinity. See, if R is infinity, then delta G is change is 0 because 1 by infinity is 0. Other case, R is finite. That means, R is having a specific value. So, this is my suppose alpha phi energy curve. Okay. Now, I am going to draw two phi energy curves of beta, one for which This is G beta, okay. Let us write down properly. This is G beta R is equal to infinity. Okay, that means very large value of R. Very large value of R means what? This interfaces are basically do not have any effect onto that. <coughs> Remember, this is delta G is inversely proportional to R. So smaller the R, larger is the effect on G delta G. Now, if I have a finite value of, so therefore, yes, what is, the equilibrium, what is this equilibrium? To equilibrium, we need to draw a common tangent. And you see, this is what is the xp alpha when r is equal to infinity and this is xp beta when r is equal to infinity. Okay. 
Now, so therefore, if I now consider when r is not infinity, r is having a definite value, that means this term has to be added to the phi energy curve. This is a phi energy curve. So, if I add, this will go up. This is addition, so therefore it will go up. So, let me just draw it. So, this is g beta, g beta when r is equal to r, some finite value of r. So, now if you clearly see the common tangent, oops, common tangent. We have to change color of the systems every time. So then the equilibrium between alpha and beta phase gets shifted. This is the composition x p alpha at r is equal to r. So the equilibrium composition between alpha and beta gets shifted to the higher value. That is the effect of change in because of the influence of the interface. So, if I have a finite diameter of the particles or the phases of beta in alpha, the equilibrium compositions will shift. So, therefore, effect is always observed in change of change in, change in equilibrium concentration. So, the, phi, the phase diagram boundaries whatever drawn, they are drawn actually at a when r is equal to infinity. So, for r equal to any other finite value, we have to redraw the phase diagrams. Actually, you have to calculate it everything. To calculate, you need gamma alpha beta, and this gamma alpha beta is very rarely uh, you know measured normally. So, that is why the problem is atomic volume can be obtained very easily. So, these diagrams actually now drawn for different nano size particles. Suppose if r become 100 nanometers or heart become 50 nanometers, we can actually draw these diagrams separately on the same phase diagrams or on separate also possible because composition is changing and this is a suppose a temperature t will be t1 so similarly for other temperature also this effect will be visible okay now one can actually we have assumed the particles to be spherical but it may not be the case if it's non spherical particle this can be also derived and can be shown the same formula actually applies that's no problem we can always assume equilibrium. Uh, e sorry, we can always assume the uh, radius of a non-spherical particles as a, <coughs> you know, equilibrium. Uh, sorry, uh, we can uh, equate that the surface areas of a sphere and the surface area of the non-spherical uh, particles and find out what is the similar R values, and we can do the calculations. It's possible. Is there in the book? Or you can also actually do as a part of a homework. That's not a big problem. We can do that. Otherwise, we can. I can explain you later. So, in a nutshell, with all these descriptions, we have completed the discussions about the thermodynamics, thermodynamics of the solutions, thermodynamics, the order phase, intermetallics, effect of pressure, temperature, even interfaces. We have started that also. So, the next class we are going to start discussion about the diffusion. Okay, diffusion will have a uh, and diffusion actually controls many of the uh, nucleation and other dynamics of the phase diagram, if after the phase transformations. So, we are going to discuss about that and then after diffusion we will discuss detail about the interfaces, what kind of interfaces will be there and how they are going to affect because this value of alpha beta interface energy will depend upon type of interface and the type of interface has to be then discuss. Then we will start different types of phase diagrams.